38 we read, Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right hand, another on the left, and those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads, and saying, You, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests, also mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he is the King of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he if he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. You know, Christmas and Easter are two of the most important Christian events in the Christian calendar as it gives us an opportunity to focus on the Christ our Lord. It gives us an opportunity to share the, the gospel message. See, our Christian faith, it rests on the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And the death of Jesus on the cross is the best thing that has ever happened for this world. As Jesus, the Son of God, dies for the sins of the world, so that we might be saved. And also, like the Apostle Paul, we can glory in the cross of Jesus today. See, the death of Jesus, our Saviour, He gives us everlasting life. He, gives, he is a light to our path. And Jesus came to pay that price for sin. Jesus, the Son of God, is hanging there on the cross. Jesus, a man of incredible power and authority, who could have called on a legion of angels, thousands of angels, to come and rescue him. Jesus had the authority over the wind. He could have blown the cross down. Jesus, who had authority over the waves, could have called forth the tsunami to wash the cross away. Jesus, who could heal the sick, could have cursed his enemies with leprosy and given them a death sentence. So Jesus, the most powerful man, the Son of God, lays down his power, lays down his authority, <coughs> And he is mocked. He is helpless. He can't move. His hands and feet are nailed and bound to the cross. And then in verse 42 of Matthew 27 it says, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. These so-called brave religious leaders, the chief priests, the scribes and the elders who had seen the amazing fruit from Jesus' ministry, had seen the evidence for Christ of who he claims to be, they come and they mock and they jeer at Jesus. Go on then. Come on down. Save yourself. If you are who you claim to be. No, you've got to have a pretty hard heart to be ridiculing and mocking an innocent good man on the cross. As Jesus is hanging there publicly, these religious hounds, they mock Christ. The ones with a religious spirit hounded and mocked Jesus as if he is something to be played with, something to be destroyed mentally, physically, emotionally, goading Jesus to death. 
Jesus has already in John 8 44 told the Pharisees that their father was the devil who is a liar and a murderer these religious hounds are still in the same spirit of the devil to lie and see Jesus killed as Jesus was judged as a criminal and executed between two, two criminals in public in a busy location for everybody to see. And yet in all of that, Jesus prays from the cross, Father forgive them for they know not what they do. For what is going on? Jesus is submitting willingly to the, to, to the worst kind of traumatic death for us. He's hanging, bleeding, bruised. He's naked on the cross. And those things are still going to get worse as he's going to be separated from his heavenly Father for us. Because of the sins of the world, yours and mine will be placed upon the cross. <laughs> That's brilliant. Sorry. <laughs> what is going on here? Now, to know what's going on, remember Jesus' words at the Last Supper. When he, when he declared, when he was breaking bread, the bread was broken for you, and the wine was his blood shed for you. That phrase, for you, explains the cross, the death of Jesus. What happened at the cross was a substitution. Jesus becomes our substitute. The cross is the place of exchange where Jesus descends to the depths so that we might ascend to the heights. It is where Jesus, out of love, became everything that we are guilty, weak, separated, subject to death, full of sin under Satan's power. And Jesus takes this upon himself so that we might share in his holiness, in his power, in his fellowship with God the Father. And when you know that Good Friday, when you know that, Good Friday becomes the best day of the year. Jesus has taken your place so that you go free. Jesus took our place and he gives us the best deal ever. Sins forgiven, the gift of everlasting life, joy unspeakable. Jesus rescues us from the everlasting separation from God the Father and that's what death really is. The religious leaders of verse 41 did not see who Jesus was, the Son of God, and what Jesus' mission was to save sinners. Even though they had the Old Testament covenant, they had the Old Testament with them, with over 574 references pointing to Jesus the Messiah with about 300 prophecies being fulfilled about Jesus when he physically walked this earth. Isaiah 53, the most famous prophecy about Jesus' death was prophesied 700 years before Jesus died on that cross. Jesus is the suffering servant, the servant king, who calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering and to worship the servant king. Don't miss out on Jesus and what he has done for you. 
let us glory and give thanks and praise for Jesus our substitute for what Jesus our substitute has done on the cross the price the cost of sin was paid in full as Jesus the perfect man pays the debt the fine for sin we can never pay the debt of ourselves but Jesus does he pays with his own life he pays with his own blood shed for our, our sin his blood shed for our redemption to buy us back to bring us back to God the Father I know personally I could not have done what Jesus did I could not cope with what Christ went through the whipping the beating falsely accused mocked spat upon stripped naked a crown of thorns pushed into his head nailed to a cross bleeding and suffocating to death while hanging there and all at the same time you have the religious leaders insulting and mocking you and then the thieves join in they're hanging there right next to you and the thieves begin to mock Jesus even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing back in verse 42 the thieves the thieves join in with the religious leaders the blind leading the blind we are seeing sin and evil at work here attacking the son of god sin and evil coming upon him and what is so profound is in the darkest vilest most venomous hour Luke 23 verse 34 shines out jesus said father forgive them for they know not what they do See, look in that context as well in Luke 23 verse 36 it reveals the soldiers are mocking Jesus so Jesus is getting mocked there from three from three three ways and then a fourth way as the crowd joins in to mock Jesus the crowd the religious leaders the thieves on the cross the Roman soldiers are all mocking Jesus and in that moment when Jesus has prayed father forgive them one of the thieves one of the robbers acknowledges his sin acknowledges who Jesus is the Son of God and he believes and in that darkest of dark moments Jesus responds in Luke 23 43 assuredly I say to you today you will be with me in paradise I see Jesus on the cross the Son of God in absolute torment doing what none of us could do as Jesus hangs there in absolute perfection conquering sin death and the devil in our place he is our substitute so we may be forgiven and have the gift of everlasting life I don't know anyone that could do that surely Jesus is the Son of God the suffering servant the resurrection and the life so our eternal fellowship may be with God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit Jesus who hangs on that cross does so so that we might know him so that we may be made right and we may receive the gift of everlasting life and this crucifixion story becomes so immensely personal because in it we are in the crowd and we are mocking Christ we are crucifying Christ and he takes our sin upon himself and he's saying father forgive them for they know not what they do 
And if we would be like the thief on the cross, if we would repent and believe in Christ, we would be forgiven and we would receive the gift of everlasting life. And to receive that gift is only a prayer away. It is to acknowledge what we are and who we are before the Lord and our shortcomings and ask for his forgiveness and the cleansing of the blood and we receive the gift of everlasting life. You see, Jesus on that cross dying for us on that Friday for us is the best day of the year, the best thing that could possibly have happened because in Christ we enter also into his victory and his inheritance <coughs> waiting for us in the glory. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the death of the Lord Jesus. And Father, we rejoice that Jesus died there to save us. Father, it breaks our hearts to think of what your Son went through, and yet we are so eternally grateful because your Son has done what none of us could do. He has taken our place. He became our substitute, so we may go free. Father, forgive us our sins. We believe in your Son. May he come into our lives, and may we walk with him and know what it is to know you, Father God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. <coughs>